<coughs> yes, over there, third row. Thank you. Stefan Simon from Deposit Solutions. My question, pretty simple. What is your view on having temporary versus permanent fallback? So differentiating between the two, if the, the original benchmark ceases only for a given period of time or permanently? If I can say some words first, I think fallback rates don't apply if on a specific day there, is, uh, there might be a problem with the, uh, with the original benchmark, so with your eyeball. We have ourselves built up a lot of contingency for, a temporary, uh, uh, for some temporary problems uh, for a certain period of time. So maybe then the fallback rates they should hit in for uh, more, structural, uh, more structural issues there. I mean, I, again, I think it's a great question, um, one we're debating in our working groups at the moment, both in relation to the eyeball fallbacks, but also in relation to uh, benchmarks more generally uh, in the updated definitions we're looking to issue um, in 2020. Uh, and intuitively, you would want provisions that uh, made, you know, told you what to do if a benchmark didn't publish for one or two days. Um, that seems obvious, but when you actually get down to what those provisions should be, uh, the solutions aren't necessarily obvious. So we could use the previous day's published rate, for example, but in a volatile market, and that may be the cause of a lack of publication, that, that could actually cause quite a lot of pain in the market. Um, I think historically, we might have said, well, the calculation agent can determine what the rate should be, but I think that goes down very badly with end users and buy side institutions and we're trying to move away from that un, un, unfettered discretion. So that begs the question, is it sometimes better not to say anything? Is it, you know, the, the market has functioned incredibly well for 30 or 40 years without having a, a, a temporary disruption fallback. Permanent cessation is a, an existential threat, if you like, and therefore definitely has to be addressed. Um, temporary cessation, I think, uh, or temporary interruption, I think, is uh, uh, of a different magnitude. More questions? Yeah. Kern Roberts, Chatham Financial. So we have a lot of corporate clients, and our corporate clients, I must admit, over the last six months, haven't asked us any questions about Esther. They ask us, Eurobor, 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 what's happening with Eurobor? And I think they found lots of information on the internet about Esther and not so much about the timetable for hybrid Eurobor. And I think when they do find it, they don't understand it. So they don't understand the benchmark regulation and what that means, and they struggle to understand how the methodology is changing whether the rate they pay will change, how much it will change. Now, I acknowledge they can find all of that information um, buried in some of the consultations, etc., but it's just a little bit too technical for them. Will there be, or is there already some information I've missed in terms of um, kind of client-friendly or corporate-friendly high-level educational material about what's happening to Eurobor reform? I mean, I must say, so one reason why we have these roundtables is really to, because we are aware of this, that maybe there's a relatively small group of financial market participants out there that really fully understand what's going on and have the capacity to understand all these technical developments. So one reason why we try to have these roundtables is to, to reach out to exactly this type of uh, clients that, that you are referring to. Now, I mean, we have a few material on the ECB website that's maybe too technical, but we have also Twittered a few times with the aim of exactly reaching out to less sophisticated clients. Um, um, on your Uribor, Jean-Louis? Um, there is a lot of material, for instance, on our website. Whenever we had consultation or come out with uh, clarifications document, we have distributed them as widely as possible to any possible financial uh, association uh, uh, and so on. And if there are some questions for clarification, we are more than happy to uh, even come or to, to, explain, uh, to explain more. It, it is difficult on our side to make no 
available some education material that are specially targeted to specific users because the range of users and across jurisdiction and so on is so wide that uh, uh, but the basic things even in uh, in a pedagogical way they they are available on our website for instance on the methodology uh, while we have the full methodology that is published there we have also a blueprint which goes step by step to explain uh, uh, how it is uh, we have co been communicated on the start of the of the phase in and on the intention so uh, it's it's available and if there are problems finding it more than happy my colleagues and myself to guide you through uh, through that it's yeah, I, maybe, I would maybe, say maybe. it's not difficult for me to find. I think it's difficult for um, sort of end users. If you go to even quite large and sophisticated corporates, um, probably find um, some of that material too dense. They need something on two pages that, that tells them what's happening in, in a very practical way. Um, if that's something that, that Emmy would be able to provide, I think it would be extremely useful to that section of the market. Maybe on the efforts of the working group. Yeah, and yeah. on the working group, I, I, I fully see your point. Eh? So it's not only on your IBER, also, also on these fallbacks, and also the, the AONIA to the Euro SDR transition. It is quite technical still. Yeah, I think we have a couple of speaker panels and also some, some presentations today, which can still be very technical. So we have not mentioned our last working subgroup, which is actually subgroup uh, seven, which is around communication, and there we will are thinking about the communication strategy that on both topics, Euro SDR uh, and transition, but also uh, Euriber and Euriber fallbacks, how should we communicate? How should we educate and communicate to our clients? And and yeah, indeed, uh, for the less sophisticated clients, uh, sophisticated clients, yeah, we have to prepare a different setup. So there we are working on, and and yeah, I think we will also closely work together with EMMI to get more clarity and to inform these uh, these clients uh, properly, because this is a clear signal that things are not sufficiently clear yet, which is for us work to be done. Thanks. Um, I can take one last question here in the middle, and then I fear we have to close. Thank you. Uh, Elspeth Kruse, Amin Emrobank. This uh, actually ties on the last question. I think we already mentioned trust, um, and I think this is also linked to um, transparency and information. Um, and um, thanks very much for hosting this uh, um, uh, uh, um, round table uh, is very useful, um, but I see a risk if uh, the financial institutions attending this round table have to translate uh, all this, this information to the retail and SME uh, clients in relation to uh, especially Euribor. So uh, I would really uh, strongly recommend uh, subgroup seven to also think about those client groups. And it's just so much stronger if it's communicated from um, European authorities, uh, which are still uh, uh, very much respected by the public, instead of um, yeah banks where there's a general distrust. I'm afraid uh, if it comes to uh, pricing uh, matters. Well, thank you. Um, I will take this question. <laughs> no, we are very much aware of this. We are also developing efforts to reach out to more clients, and I mean, we are facilitating this not only this event, but also yeah, the whole working group to give it also credibility and make it appear not only a private sector endeavor, but really a public-private partnership. But um, I, I hear you, and I, I, I very much agree with you that community. I mean, now we have had so many technical steps. Um, that the working group has taken care of. I think the communi and, and communication was more difficult before having real details of what's going on now because that can be even more confusing. So I think the more we progress with the work of the working group and have clear recommendations, the easier it will be also to transmit them to the general public. So thank you very much uh, to the panel for your excellent contributions and to the audience for, for coming here and listening and asking very good questions. All the videos and presentations will be made available on the website, so please forward them to your clients um, if they are not too technical. Um, <clears throat> uh, before I hand over to Stephen for the final remarks, uh, let me just say that we will have a sandwich lunch that you are welcome to attend, and it will again be out here if you follow the corridor a few steps up on the, on the terrace. 
Yeah, so thanks a lot. And um, Stephen, could you come up, please? Thank you.